Today I'm excited to be introducing a brand new Notion template that incorporates the main elements from David Allen's Getting Things Done. The problem that I found with some of the other templates that are out there on the market is that they're missing key features. So I created my own template that has everything that you need such as next action list, a projects list, a waiting list, and also an area where you can do your weekly review. So stick around if you want to go from this to this, and I'll show you where you can download the free template. So here we are on the dashboard, and you'll see that this template is made up of two databases, a GTD database, which holds all of the, our tasks, and a projects database, where we can have more information about each individual project. You can click through to those if you wish. But the heart of the system is the inbox. So this very much follows the getting things done methodology, where you capture all of your tasks and ideas in one place. So you can just add additional items here. So for example, say I was working with some clients, I might want to do some competitor research. And during the day, you can just add all of your tasks onto here. So I've already put a couple here earlier. So you can see that after the task name, there's a, a nice check box for when the task is completed, a due date, uh, which is the date when you're going to do it, and then some projects. Now, in this case, I've set up some projects for clients that I'm working with. So you can choose whichever ones are most appropriate. And that goes through to the projects link database. And then the most important part of this inbox, which is the type. And there's three different options here. The first is a next action. So that's an action that you're going to be taking. So it will put it onto our task database. Now the wording that David Allen uses is a next action. We also have a waiting option. Now this might be something that you've delegated out or maybe you're working with a contractor. So someone you've found on Fiverr or Upwork and you can put it on a waiting list. And then there's a someday maybe option. So this may be an idea that you've had um, that you're not gonna be implementing it in the immediate future. It might be say a month, three months or 12 months in the future but it's just there so you don't uh, lose that idea. The critical part here is that once you give a type to a task, it will be taken out of your inbox. So this one called client, we can put that down as a next action. And as you can see, it's no longer in the inbox. Uh, chase copy for an about page, that's gonna be because we're waiting for the client to actually give us some copy, which is the text or uh, images for a website design, we're actually waiting on them. So I'll put it into waiting. The overall idea is that you start to process your inbox so that it gets down to zero tasks. If you prefer a cleaner look, this inbox is in a toggle, so you can just uh, toggle that off so that you can concentrate on exactly what's important to you. Let's now turn our attention to what you might be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. David Allen suggests to look at your calendars first and then your next actions list. So I've put them down in that order. So let's look at this toggle, open this toggle and we'll look at our weekly calendar. So these are some of the tasks that we have coming up for this week. If you want to look at what's coming up next week, you just need to go to uh, this forward arrow and then we can see what's coming up next week as well. Now for things to appear on this calendar, when you're putting things in your inbox up here, they do need to have a due date. So this competitor research that I started putting in, if I put a date in, let's put today's date in, you can see it's just appeared on here, so competitor research. Um, if you don't put a date in there, then it won't be appearing in your calendars. Now calendars are quite uh, an important part of the GTD system. And as you probably know, 
um, David Allen has quite a strict way of using them, which is things that are coming up on this particular day, so say an appointment or something needs to be done on a particular day. I like to also put dates on task lists. So it's really up to you how you use this particular feature. As well as having the weekly calendar, if I just close that, there's also a monthly calendar. So it allows you to see things on a longer time frame. Now let's move on to our next actions. And now we're really getting into the heart of the system. So I've got some sample data here, which is for a freelancer who's working with some clients. And you can see each of the tasks are listed here. So it's a little bit like a task manager that you might have seen in other systems. But what we have is four columns here, which are, well, really specific to the getting things done method. And what they help you do is decide what task you should be doing next. So to take each one in turn, the first one is context, and that could be, well, I've put some examples in the context that David Allen uses, um, phone calls, reading review, work that's done at home or at the office. Now, the idea here is that you can group your tasks so that you become more efficient. So if you're making, let's say you've got some a group of phone calls to make, while you're in the mood and you've actually got your phone there, you can make a number of them at any one time. The next column is priority, whether a task is a high priority or low priority, which you can choose from a drop down menu here. Obviously you wanna be tackling your high priority tasks first. Moving on to the third column, and this is how long a, each of the individual tasks will take. I find this particularly useful when I'm deciding what to do on a daily basis so that I don't overload myself with too many tasks, which um, I'm prone to doing and then getting disappointed when I can't actually finish them. And then the final column is an interesting one, which is energy level, which you can choose from low, medium or high again. Now I have the highest energy in the morning, so I might choose to do high energy chart tasks then. And then when it gets to, let's say four o'clock in the afternoon, I may choose to do some low energy tasks. So I can still get things done and feel that I'm being productive, but I don't have to have the mental horsepower that I may need to, let's say, start a new project. This is the main task view, but I've also set up some other views which allows you to see this data a little bit more clearly. So if you click on context, you can see those contexts in a nice list. This is actually a board view. So if you wanted to do all of your phone calls at once, you can see where the phone calls are. Um, also, I've set up similar for priority levels. So you can have a nice list of your high priority tasks and again for energy levels. So if you were ch trying to choose um, your low energy ones, you can see them all in a list here. I think it's important to say that when you're filling in this information, you don't have to fill in everything, but I'll maybe give it a go because um, what, what you don't want to be doing is spending more time actually filling in your notion sheet than you're actually doing the actual tasks themselves but um, try it and see how you get on with it. Um, if there's anything that you don't particularly like, all you need to do is let's say you don't get on with context, you can just come along to these three dots, click on properties, and then come down to context. And what you can do is click on this icon and it will hide it. And you can see now context is no longer um, in your task database. If you want to see just what you have for today, you can just close this all next actions and open the actions for today. And that's everything that has a date or due date of today um, showing up. So it's just nice and clear. And again, you have these alternative views for today as well. I just wanted to mention that when you're processing your inbox, um, all your next actions will automatically come in here. So if we just move back up to our inbox and remember we were filling in this particular task, 
um, which has today's date on it. We just need to give it a project. And then once you fill in the task as next action, you can see that it then automatically moves to this section. And then once it's here, you can fill in these four columns for context, priority, time and energy. The next section is the waiting list. Now, this is quite simple. This is all things that you're waiting on, that you've delegated out or you're just waiting for someone to get back to you. Now, you have the choice of putting a due date in here. I like to do this because let's take one of these as an example, chasing copy for an about page. This could be where you're doing some web design and you're reliant on the client to send you the text and the images. Now, if they said to you that they send them by the 4th of September, you can put a date of the 5th of September in there and then that is just a trigger for you to send them a friendly reminder if they haven't actually sent you that information. And by putting a date on there, it will also pop up in your calendar here. So now let's close the toggle on that and move on to the final section, which is the all important weekly review. Now the first part of this is just a reminder to process all the items in your inbox. So ideally you want to get this down so that you've got no outstanding tasks there. And then we have a toggle for all of our outstanding next actions, which um, if you're doing it at the end of the week, you can make sure that you've added all the relevant information in here that you need. And that will help you plan your next week. The next part is everything that you've completed in the last seven days. Now, this is something I like to do because we're often very much looking forward to what we haven't done, but it's sometimes quite good to reflect on what you have actually accomplished. And sometimes it's more than what you actually give yourself credit for. Certainly I find that's the case and anything that's been done and actually given a date. If you haven't given it a a due date uh, then it won't actually appear here but if you've given it a date it will appear in that section then there's the someday maybe list so these are things that you might do in the future such as, such as uh, redesigning a website now again if you give these a date they turn into what David Allen refers to as a tickler file now this is something you might do in the future but it will bubble up on that particular date. So let's say redesigning the website, you've given it this date, it will bubble up in your calendar. So it'd be like a, a reminder to you to decide if this is a project you want to go forward with. So at that time, you can then decide, well, I'm gonna put it off for let's say another three months, or you can actually turn it into a task. So you could open that up and then to turn it into a next action, you would just select that option. Or you may decide that you are no longer going to pursue that particular task, and then in which case you can just delete it. And then the final thing, you can, if we just close that toggle, is to look at the various projects that you have. Now, quite often we're looking at things from a task base, um, but here we're looking at it from the project base. So you can see every, all of the tasks that you have outstanding for each individual task. And then they're sorted by date, so the most urgent ones are gonna come at the top. So you can see here we have our various clients for our freelancer, um, Aragon Cosmetics, Cardinal Law, etc. And all of the tasks are grouped by each of those different projects. And then once you've gone through each of these different sections, you should be in a position where you can re reflect on what you've achieved and plan your next week. So there you have a very simple getting things done Notion template. If you would like to download this template, the details are in the description below this video. 
If you're interested in boosting your productivity using Notion, then you may also be interested in seeing this video, which shows you the best way to use Kanban boards in Notion.